and ESPN welcomes you to race one in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Today it's the Geico 400 from the Chicagoland Speedway in Joliet, Illinois. You look at the starting grid coming across the top of your screen, headed by Matt Kenseth, one of the championship chasers. His fellow Wisconsinite is alongside. First time ever we've had an all Wisconsin natives front row in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. As we cycle back on through the starting grid, eventually we'll get to Tony Stewart. He's kind of mid-pack back in row number 13. Tony, the subject of our Gillette Pro Glide profile. And a performance today at one of his best racetracks could turn some skeptical about his chances to win this championship into believers. We'll find out as these 400 miles unfold. 43 drivers trying to win the 400 mile race. 12 drivers looking to take the first step in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Green flag at Chicagoland. The lead lap one. First bonus point for leading laps to Kenseth. Kurt Busch second. Paul Menard third. First side by side. It's going to be for second place. Here's Menard looking on Kurt Busch. Yeah, Kurt Busch got a little bit of a wiggle right there in the center of the corner. Shot him up the racetrack, opened the door for Menard. Back is green, has a lot of grip, a lot of speed. They have a competition cost in the, after 30 laps, so these drivers are going to push the cars hard. Got to see what they need to be working on. With the green race track, the competition caution, kind of standard NASCAR procedure. Let the crew chiefs and teams get a look at the tire wear and make sure everything is good and safe. Right there was something I was wanting to see, how much these guys might push the issue up on the, that second groove. See Kirk Busch get a great run off of turn two. There's Carl Edwards in the 99, Greg Biffle in the 16 coming up to join the second place race. Edwards kind of looks like he was looking for a hole to find a way around. A lot of people pointed at the Roush Fords and all the Fords here this weekend. It seemed like that they, the engine package really suits this racetrack. But it hasn't in the past. They've never won here. Roush Racing has never won in any series at this track. So Carl Edwards looks like one of the strong horses for him today. And there it is. Competition caution. NASCAR making it its custom when they have a, a set caution to come out like that to let almost all of the lead lap cars cross the start finish line before they put the yellow out. So something doesn't get crossed up in the throwing of the caution flag and trap somebody inadvertently a lap down. So here we go. Yellow number one is going to come out for all the pit crews to go to work. Looking farther ahead, we've seen a lot of races where strategy and the late going of the race has decided it, be it fuel mileage or tire strategy. A lot of folks expect in the late going of this race, we're going to see that. Yeah, some of the teams might even try a little experiment right here because they've only run 30 laps. It's not going to hold a full tank of fuel, which uh, to put the full tank of fuel, it takes about 14 seconds to do that. So you might as well put four tires on. When you only have to take a half a load, it's a time that you could just take two tires and, and see what happens. And so we'll just see what happens here. Pit crews get ready to go to work. The AT&T Fastest Pit Crew of the Year Award is determined by the winner of each race, the fastest pit time, and your vote. Text the car number to 234-567 of your pit crew choice. 34 car David Gilliland was the first car a lap down. 38th place. He gets the Aaron's Lucky Dog free pass. Put Gilliland, the California native, back on the lead lap and put the green light at the end of pit road open. Flashing, saying it's time to go to work. Jamie? Well, Carl Edwards, as many of the drivers said, he started out free, but he tightened up a little bit, wants to go back on the air pressure, wants a wedge adjustment, expects long runs today. Four tires for Carl Edwards, Vince. The 18 of Kyle Busch, he says it's just a little snug in the center and snug off. It's a two-tire change for Kyle Busch. Dave? Older brother Kurt Busch says that the exit of the corner is okay for him, but the center, he needs to turn a little bit better. Four-tire change full of Sunoco fuel. Doc? Right lower corner, race leader Matt Kenseth tight on the first third on entry. They're going to change air pressure. Quarter round left.
left rear when we heard the exit. And the 17 car is the second car off because of the two tire change from the 18. He beats him off. Now, like you forecast, Andy, one team going to roll the dice on that strategy and find out what it's going to do for later. Kyle Busch will lead off pit road. Second place, 22, Kurt Busch, 17, Matt Kenseth. As yeah. Kyle Busch gets to the lead. See how Kenseth's bar handles up there on that top side. He moved up there a few laps, but that was after they had about 15 laps on their tires. Kind of had things his way in that first run, run wherever he wanted to, but most of it was done on the bottom. Got Biffle, 16, Menard, 27, then a little gap. Back to the rest of the pack. Possible trouble being reported on Denny Hamlin's car, Dave. Allen, when the spotter says get ready, get ready before the green, that's a good thing. That gets the driver pumped up. When the driver says get ready, that's not necessarily a good thing. He's got a vibration right now. Denny says we may have left a wheel loose. Boys, get ready on pit road. I may have to come down. Now keep an eye on that for us, Dave. There's second place. Carl Edwards moving forward. 99 driver with, we talked about mile and a half tracks earlier. The best record this season of the races on the mile and a half tracks is Edwards in that 99. And he's trying to chase down the driver that's the only driver to finish in the top 10 in all the mile and a half tracks, and that's Kurt Busch, our leader. A little farther back, Kevin Harvick, 29. Marcos Ambrose in the 9, and Tony Stewart in the 14. Some of the guys that started deeper in the field that as the races work past its quarter mark are chipping their way forward. Stewart started back in 26th position. Vince, right now he's up there in 12th. Yeah, the car's starting to work a little better. They made good adjustments on both the first and second stops that have helped Tony Stewart's race car. And Stewart may be the only guy that was really kind of glad they didn't race yesterday. He had a bad migraine yesterday. He said it finally broke late last night, and he got a much-needed good night's sleep. I can tell you, seeing him yesterday, he was not comfortable at all. Looked much better before the race today. And Stewart's getting after it here in the early going in Chicagoland. Running these kind of speeds with this much at stake, not feeling well, can't be a good thing. No, it's never fun. You know, there are days that you just have to kind of suck it up and go on, and he would have been there and doing what he had to, but uh, nice that that's all gone away. Tony's feeling good and running good. Greg Biffle was running fifth a minute ago. Then he came down pit road for an unscheduled green flag stop, and now he's running 35th a lap down. Thought he had a flat tire, said it was the right front. He's slowing down to pit road speed, and he grinds a left front tire down pretty good you can see the tire changers they're under green tire changer says no nope, the tire is not flat on the right front jamie so something was going on with the front end andy and when he came in he locked it up look at this tire it has a huge bubble in it i just asked the goodyear guys they said we've never seen such a thing you see the boards here he's coming back down on pit road they think that they either have a broken shock or the radiator pan was dragging on it. So this car was really good, guys. Now the 16 having some issues. Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that tire. I think he did that on trying to get down to pit road speed and not lose too much time. That other issue, uh, you know, what made him come to pit road was, is what would worry me. A broken shock at these speeds at this track would not be not good. a good thing. Well, Carl Edwards is tracking down Kurt Busch. He closed, lost a little ground, sliding off turn four a couple of times. Now he's tracking him down again. And I think we'll probably see Carl Edwards try to get in a little bit of more clean air this time. Seemed the last time that he ran him down, he was right in behind Kurt Busch. That's whenever he kind of lost the front end. Very sensitive arrow with the speeds they're running here. Talked about the sun coming out, maybe changing track conditions. This on Carl's radio a minute ago. Who said, who said Bob Osmond didn't have a sense of humor? A little, be little Beatles <laughs> yeah. from the pit box for the. I think uh, Carl, Carl's loosened him up a little bit. Uh, he had to pass made there. I'm not sure he's going to. No, he lost too much momentum. They caught there by uh, the Dave Blaney car that they were putting down a second lap back in 37th place. So now he's got to regroup and try again. So yeah, he, had, he had done everything perfect and got in the right spot, was going to be able to make that pass off of turn two. Just to go back at it here, which doesn't look like it's going to be a problem. 
I think Carl's going to like the sun coming out, too. A slick racetrack works to his advantage also. It's got to be fun, middle of the race. Uh, you don't have anybody pushing these two guys. So they can race each other as hard as they want. And, uh, you know, I, you're not going to take any chances, but it's got to be a lot of fun racing like this. Well, it is fun. And, you know, it, this gives you an idea of what you can be able to do later, where your car might be a little bit better. And, and it, even though Carl has run Kirk Busch down, there may have been points there that he said, Hey, this is where Kirk Busch is a little better than I am, but obviously I'm better than him in some other fast spots. As you see him take the lead now. You led that lap. We got that lap. Carl Edwards kind of slid back in that opening lap of racing here. Oh, one in the wall. That's Marcus Ambrose in the nine. No caution yet. Just stay high here. Got a couple coming inside. Shake out what you got there. Shake out what you got. What he's got is a damaged race car. Yeah, but we've seen these cars be pretty tough. He's back in the throttle now. So it apparently feels like everything's okay. Ambrose lead lap in that nine car. Top right. Oh, wow. That wall saved him from spinning out. He still he hit it hard, though. So pit road open here. Johnson, Stewart, Kenseth Newman, Kurt Busch, top five coming in. On the 48 pit stop, Jamie. And the 38 will be coming in to pit in front of them, so they have to keep their eye on that. Told Jimmy Johnson stops short. Four tires, Jimmy said he's getting just a bit free. Track bar down. He was backing off to save fuel in that round, Vince. Tony Stewart, he's a two-time winner here in Chicagoland, and he's got a car he believes can do it again today. Just a little tight on compression, a four-tire change, Dave. Top right, Ryan Newman gives up fourth. About time to get some left side tires. The left rear will have a little more air in it. Car was loose. Stock, right lower corner. Matt Kansas said car chattering in the middle type, but much better off. He's going to raise the track for a little more. And here is Kansas. He will win the battle off pit road after a four-tire change. By the way, they're about nine laps shy on fuel, making it to the checkered flag. You, you know that how sensitive these cars are to, to arrow, get behind the car. You can just keep someone back there. Gives you a better chance. And I think Tony Stewart thinks his car is just as good as anybody here on this longer run. So he doesn't want to give up a spot right now. Danny Hamlin with more troubles. Yeah, that came from contact a little bit earlier. About a lap after the restart, he got in a three-wide situation. I saw some contact, but wasn't sure that it was going to create a problem. Just a bad day for Hamlin so far. Just joining us, got one of those strategy situations shaping up. Guys are racing for the win, but trying to make sure they've got enough fuel to get to the checkered flag. Yeah, and Martin Truex up there taking over that second spot. He's got nothing to lose right now. He can't make it anyway from here, so he might as well run as hard as he possibly can. And See what happens from here. You got Tony Stewart up there just looking in his mirror. So, like I say, clutching it. He's running decent lap times doing that. He's learned how to do that well and run fast enough and save fuel. Referencing the 56 car, remember he did not pit under that last caution, Dave. What are they saying now? Last time he did, Allen, was lap 205. You add 50 to that and a few caution laps. You don't quite get to lap 267, so they haven't called him in yet, but he's certainly got the button down right now. Doesn't look like he's saving fuel. And looking at the gap from this second place car up to Tony Stewart, right? Stewart's in there. He's dropping that clutch in the corners, trying to save a little fuel. And he's got to have an eye on the rearview mirror at the same time, right? To make, a, make sure he doesn't give up too much ground. Yeah, that's why this job's so easy. Everybody yeah. can just jump in these and drive. So, yeah. yeah, that's a lot going on, you know. Oh, by the way, I'm leading the race, and here's everything that I have to do to make sure that I do it properly and deal with lap cars and cars that are coming at me pretty fast.